it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Hey there everyone, it's Stephen here from StudyClicks, and in this video I want to talk you through all things about the arithmetic sequence. We're going to start off in our log tables and see the first formula we meet for this, which is the TN or the general term formula. This formula gives you a formula for the pattern or for the sequence. So let's start off by thinking about what do these sequences look like. The first term in any arithmetic sequence is called A. After that, to get the next sequence, we add on some common difference D. So the second term would be A plus D. Then to get the third term, we add D on again and we'd get A plus 2D. And so on, we'd have A plus 3D and that process would continue. So that's the structure of an arithmetic sequence. And what we want to do in this video is take a look at how do we find a formula to represent this sequence. There are two key features of every arithmetic sequence and they're noted here in the log tables. The first is that A is the first term. So whatever number is in the first position, we're gonna let that equal A. And secondly, D is the common difference. That's whatever number you're adding or subtracting on each time to get the next term. If we tackle this question, we're asked to find the general term formula Tn for the following arithmetic sequences. So first up, I have 5, 2, minus 1, and minus 4. Now, I have my Tn formula here on page 22 in the logs. I know I need to know what A is and what D is. A is the first term, so that's really simple. We're saying A equals 5. And to get D, what we can do is we can see, okay, what happens? How do we get from the first term to the second term? Well, we can take them away. 2 take away 5, which equals minus 3 or we could subtract off any other two consecutive terms. We could do minus four, minus minus one to get minus three also. So D is the common difference. It's your second term, take away your first term, or your third term, take away your second term, and so on. Now I can slap these figures into the formula. I'm just gonna say that TN, N stays, it's gonna equal A, which is five, plus N minus one times D minus three. I'm gonna multiply out the right-hand side and tidy it up. And here I have it, Tn equals 8 minus 3n. This formula will give us any possible term in the sequence. The general representation of any term looks like that. So if I wanted to find out what the 10th term was, what I would do is I'd sub in n equals 10. If I wanted to find out what the fifth term was, I would sub in n equals 5, and so on. Let's apply this formula to another pattern. We have p, p plus 7, and p plus 14. So straight away, I'm gonna say what a is. a is the first term, which equals p. And our common difference here, we're adding on 7 each time. I hope we can all see. So D is just going to be 7. And again, I'm firing away and plugging these figures into our formula. So Tn equals P plus N minus 1 times 7. And I'll multiply out and tidy up. And there we have it. We have our formula Tn equals P plus 7N minus 7. And again, this unlocks every term in the sequence. If I wanted to find out what the hundredth term was, I would simply sub in n equals 100. If I wanted to find the 25th term, I would sub in n equals 25 and work it out. So these formulas create a general term or a general representation of the entire pattern. The TN formula can then be used to solve some problems involving sequences. So if we look at a scenario here where we have our pattern 4, 7, 10, 13, and we're told it's an arithmetic sequence, in part A, we're gonna find the nth term of the sequence, which is your general term formula. So let's just fly ahead and do exactly as we did above. We get Tn equals 3n plus 1. We'll move on to part B where we're asked to find the 27th term of this sequence. So what I'm going to do is I have to find T27. So wherever there's an n, n is your term number in the sequence, I'm going to substitute in 27 for that. And I get 82. So I know the 27th term here equals 82. Part C then asks, which term is 151? So this is kind of going backwards. We have to try to find which term. So we're looking for which TN, which general term is equal to 151. So what I do is I take my formula 3N plus 1, which is TN, which gives us any nth term, and I let that equal 151. And if I solve out for N here, we'll get the term number. And we get n equals 50, meaning the 50th term is equal to 151. 
that's the general gist of your arithmetic sequence, folks. The general term formula is really simple to use. All you have to do is find out what A, your first term is, and D, your common difference. And your common difference is whatever number you add and subtract on to each consecutive term.